Hello, I'm Andrew Campbell from Ashridge Business School, and I've got here with me Ian Slater, um, who is an HR director, divisional HR director from ABF. And we're here to share with you some tips from our course at Ashridge Business School called Advanced Organization Design. So tip number one. Tip number one is take a stakeholder perspective. Um, a lot of people will advise uh, you to primarily focus on the customers. And we have found that um, successful organizations de depend on engagement and loyalty from not just customers, that they also need engagement and, and loyalty from employees, from suppliers, business partners, even from the, the owners, the shareholders, the providers of, of money. And, and often, in certain situations, other stakeholders. And if you're designing a, f uh, a function within an organization, then many of the stakeholders will be internal stakeholders. Uh, start your work by taking a stakeholder perspective. Ian. So tip number two is to make sure that there's a box for every strategically important priority. You will get information and understand what the organization is saying its priority is. And the first step is to look and see whether that's reflected in the organization structure. In fact, what we often find is that you can tell more about the true strategy of an organization from how it's currently structured and where its priorities are than from the documents you read. So uh, check the structure. If you're hearing that an organization has a priority and you can't find it represented in the structure, then it means that it's very unlikely that it will be delivered. Andrew. Tip number three. Um, tip number three is draw organization charts as organization models. Um, now, the typical organization chart tells you who reports to whom and may tell you a little bit about the relative levels of people who report into the same boss. But it tells you very little about how those people work together, what their relationships are. Good organization design is about creating an environment and a structure that allows people to form the best working relationships with each other, the most effective working relationships. And drawing uh, an organization model is a way of laying out those relationships and, and is a critical part of good design. Ian. So tip number four is avoid the trap of trying to over-design the organization. Design as much as you need to design to allow you to move forward, but allow the freedom for people who are then going to be working in the organization to design the detail of those elements. There's been a huge pressure in recent years to try and be all seeing and design every element of an organization. That's not only timely, uh, time consuming and very expensive, but no group of individuals or individuals can truly understand all of the detail and complexity of roles. So our tip here is design as much as you need to do to help clarify to the people who will then be taking that and we're doing more detailed design what you're trying to achieve and give them the space and the freedom to continue the design and build it in a way that works for them. Andrew. I like this just enough design thought very much. So now tip number tip number five. Tip number five is Go for a unit structure if you can. Uh, there are three basic structures for any layer in any organization. A, a value chain structure of functions, that's like make, buy, sell, where the customer can't get any value until all of the functions have done their work. A unit structure, which might be geographic or product or market, where each unit can deliver something to its customers without close cooperation with the other units. So you've divided up the organization into units. And a matrix structure, a matrix of units where you might have geography and product or you might have market and product uh, dimensions uh, where more coordination is required before the customer can get value. A unit structure is the best of the three if it makes sense for your organization. Because 
it's lower cost to manage. The manager of a number of units can let most of the decisions be made by those units, maybe manage the whole team on monthly meetings rather than weekly or daily meetings. The individuals in the units um, are more motivated, they are able to take more decisions, they're able to get on with their work without getting permission from half a dozen other people outside their unit. So be prepared to compromise the perfect solution to go for a unit structure. Ian. So tip six and the final tip for this session is to spend the appropriate amount of time on developing a robust set of design principles. In fact, it's critical to de develop the design principles with the executive group that will be making the decisions on the redesign before you allow them near any options. Working on design principles allows them to think about the capabilities that the organization has and needs to maintain and needs to develop to deliver the strategy in the future without draft drifting into debates around politics, power and role. So you get those out there so that individuals can evaluate more appropriately the options when they come back. Uh, the other really important thing about robust and meaningful uh, design principles are at the point at which the decision has been taken, they form an incredibly powerful golden thread from the design work through into the change and implementation because they form a very robust basis for describing to the organization why you're going in the direction you're going into, why the changes are important, and why the organization you're proposing meets the future needs and where they'll fit into it. So don't cut time out by avoiding doing real work on design principles. They're essential to good design. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Um, a great stake in the ground in any design process is this, the design principles step. These are our six step, six tips. Um, we, we cover these and a number of others on the Advanced Organization Design course. It's a four-day course. It's a lot of fun. Please come.